You know, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, yesterday we did a show and we talked about, was it yesterday? I can't even remember. Maybe the day before yesterday. We talked about New York City. We talked about the fact that there was this editorial in the um, in a New York Post. The New York Post saying, you know, New York City's dead. It's, it's, just, it's just not going to be able to recover. It's, it's the high taxes, the huge regulations, the fact that businesses are discovering they don't need people in the offices, the, the, the disrespect of police, the unfunding of the police in New York City, the rising crime rates, the rising homelessness, the obnoxiousness of the homeless people, uh, you know, all together with the growth in broadband and people discovering the efficacy of broadband. And again, whether you agree with this or not, it's an interesting perspective. And, um, and, and he wrote this, and he says, he's, the guy who wrote it, says he's never got so, many, so much hate mail in his life. I'm sure all the New Yorkers who love New York came after him. And of course, one of those New Yorkers uh, put, a, put an editorial in the New York Times today, and that was Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld published an editorial, maybe today, maybe it was a Saturday, um, basically making fun of this argument and basically saying, you got to be kidding me. New Yorkers will, New York will always be New York. It, it's too uh, big of a city. The, all these issues, they're, they're all details. Who cares? There's an energy here. There's an excitement here, and we'll always be back, and we'll always make it happen. In a sense, evading a lot of the arguments that the other guy made, not really addressing the arguments the other guy made, but the article itself is filled with insults, right? So this is one, Jerry Seinfeld, uh, you know, insulting this guy who owns a comedy club that Jerry has performed in many times. So it's just an entertaining piece if you want to look it up in the New York Times. And then today, uh, the guy responded in the New York Post to Jerry Seinfeld and again tries to put Jerry Seinfeld down uh, and, and make fun of him. Uh, and, and but he makes the point, you know, you, you, you're ignoring reality, you're ignoring the facts, you're ignoring what's actually going on in the ground, you're ignoring the fact that policy, unless policy changes, real policies, like the high tax rate, and, and but if that, you know, and, and the fact that the city is bankrupt, and yeah, the city could be bailed out by the federal government, particularly if, if Biden uh, gets elected, New York might be bailed out, but um, how are you going to pay the deficit? How, who's going to pay taxes? The deficit's only going to grow because taxes are going to shrink. What about all those closed down businesses? How is New York going to recover is the question. And what policies are we going to put in place in order to bring New York back? Right. And, um, you know, we'll, we will see. Frank says Democrats destroyed New York. Did they? Why is it everything Democrats, Republicans? I mean, I agree that leftists destroyed New York, but, you know, most of the most productive people in uh, New York are Democrats. Most of the CEOs of the big investment banks and the financial institutions and the private equity and others are Democrats. They destroy New York. Um, yeah, bad mayors, leftist ideas, BLM kind of ideology. Uh, destroyed New York. But, uh, you know, New York has had some decent Democratic mayors. Bloomberg, when he ran, was an independent and was in the past a Democrat and a Republican, I guess. Uh, it's not about politics. It's not about Democrats, Republicans. It's about policies. And it's about an attitude. And uh, I would argue that even under Bloomberg, New York was heading downwards and heading towards devastation. And a lot of other cities that have Republican mayors are in deep, deep trouble. Deep, deep trouble. So, um, so yes. So uh, we have a um, we have this little debate going on. I think it's entertaining, and you might want to check it out. New York Post, and New York Times, about the future of New York. And I don't know what the answer is. New York is incredibly resilient, and for all I know, um, it might be the case that. New York bounces back because it engages in the kind of, well, first because Biden could win, and if Biden wins, they might get a bailout, and if they get a bailout, maybe then they will engage in the right kind of policy changes. They have in the past. New York went bankrupt in the 70s, but now is worse. There's no question now is worse because of technology, but also because of uh, because of high real estate prices, because of uh, a lot of things, uh, because of, of COVID has destroyed so many businesses, they're going to be hard to recover. Um, a, a lot of things against New York right now, and we will see if it can recover. I, for one, I don't know about you guys, but I, for one, love New York. I mean, it is a one and only, one and only uh, city. 
And, uh, you know, it's the only place in the world that is has that vibe that is New York. And just like I mourn already for Hong Kong because Hong Kong is dying, I hope I don't have to mourn for New York. I hope New York can come back. We will see. We will see. A, a lot of policy changes are going to have to happen for New York to be resurrected and return to its glory days. But I hope it happens. I think we all should hope it happens. All right, last... What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want, to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>